in the airplane. Your family was waiting for you in the airplane. How? How is it possible? Maybe the entire cabin crew is your family. Like the captain and the first officer. One of them is your brother. The other is your brother-in-law or, or sister-in-law. Okay, you are not one of those people who rush things and they don't know what to pack, when to pack, and they're not organized enough. You always pack everything you double check maybe triple check before you leave a place especially when you're on a trip right well there are certain other people that maybe intentionally maybe unintentionally so it, for them it was just all an accident but they have left something behind while they were on a trip you are asking me why i'm asking you these questions <laughs> Welcome to IELTS Choose. We're going to assess a letter and the theme or the rubric of the letter says you have just returned home after living with a family in an English-speaking country for six months. Well, IELTS is very generous in giving us details here. You now realize that you left a small bag of personal possessions in your room. I intentionally put stress on the plural nouns uh, in our rubrics because it is important. IELTS is telling us that it's more than one item. So this, let's look at the, let's wrap up. Let's see. Let's look at the whole thing from a, from a distance. You have just returned home. So let's say, your home is in the Philippines and you were out, so you were out of the country for six months and you lived with an English-speaking family in, let's say, Australia. So you were there for six months and you lived with a family and you had your own room. That is what happened. Once you came back to the Philippines, you open your bag, you open your suitcase, and you realize that a collection, a, but not a very large one, but a collection of small personal things were uh, gone missing. And you realize that Maybe intentionally, maybe unintentionally, you left those, those items, again, plural, but personal and small. So we're not talking about a TV set, for instance. Uh, you, you forgot them. And they are still in your room back in Australia with that English-speaking family. Why am I doing this? I want you to picture the whole thing. So it's not just, uh, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't need to go generic. You actually need to come up with a scenario. And you can say, what items are there? Hmm, maybe if I'm a woman, I forgot my mirror and my comb. If I'm a man, I forgot my tie and my tie clip, whatever. But you left them in your room. Now let's see what IELTS wants us to address. There are three bullet points, always. The first one says, write to the family, describing the things you left behind. So you are going to describe the things you left behind, the items, what they are, what they look like, and they, plural, so they, uh, should you, you should actually explain the items one by one. Then ask them to send those items to you. So you are going to ask that English speaking family to send these items back to your home. So uh, a, an international shipment from Australia to the Philippines. That's costly. That, that takes time. And yes, 
you, you need to offer to cover the cost. It's a very good gesture. It's not their fault that some items are left behind. So you can kindly ask them to do a favor for you. This is important. You need to be very polite. It's a formal letter. And you also need to be very kind because they are going to do a favor for you. They're not, they're under no obligation to do it. But out of their kind heart, they can do it for you. Now, why am I explaining these things? Before I go ahead and start reading the candidate's response, I want you to know every time when we have a letter, we need a scenario. We need to come up with some items. As I said, in this case, we have mirrors. We may have combs. We may have ties, bow ties, cufflinks, pens, fountain pens, anything. And then you have Australia. In your case, you can, you can pick Canada. You can pick the US, England. It, that doesn't matter really, just an English speaking country. And then you need to also think about your home country, the Philippines, Poland, Venezuela. You need to come up with a name. Do you have to write it? Well, no, you don't have to write the name of the country. I am telling you, you need to come up with a name because that name will help you visualize things easier. Because in this case, from Australia to the Philippines, the cost of shipping is a lot. But let's imagine another scenario. Imagine that your home, home country was Mexico and you lived with an English-speaking family in Texas for six months. So you don't, you don't have to pay that much you can just ask someone to bring it from Texas to Mexico. It's not that far of a distance. But in, in that case, from Australia to the Philippines, you have to pay for an air freight. And that's expensive. I am telling you these things to help you come up with some words, some vocabulary, to visualize things better. When you visualize, you give it details, you give it depth. And with that depth comes words, sentences. You can come up with items and you can show off your range of vocabulary and your ability to control the English language and the English sentences in your letter. Let's carry on now reading the candidate's response. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith, very polite, very formal, just a very good opening. I hope this letter finds you well. Good. Uh, this is, again, the tone so far is polite, is very appreciative, I like it. I don't know why we have a new line here. There is no need, this is not necessary. You can start your first paragraph. This is not a paragraph, and you don't need to write anything like this in a letter. Yesterday, I need a comma after yesterday, I finally arrived home. So this, this word, like, finally, sounds, sounds to me like you, you have been on quite a journey home. Maybe you walked home? You or you, if your English speaking country was the UK and your home country was Poland, then you would technically be on a train for a few days to get to Poland. Yes. In that case, I when you say I finally arrived, means yeah, it's been two days or so that I've been on a train and I have finally arrived. I, it makes me a little doubtful why 
we have the word finally here. It's a bit weird. Unless there is an explanation, and I already told you some explanations. While my family were waiting, you can say my family was waiting, you can say my family were waiting, usually it is was in the airplane. In the airplane. Your family was waiting for you in the airplane. How? How is it possible? Maybe the entire cabin crew is your family, like the captain and the first officer. One of them is your brother, the other is your brother-in-law or, or sister-in-law. And then you have the flight hostesses or flight hosts. They are somehow your relatives. And then you had this air bridge, you, you were walking down the air bridge and everybody was on the plane shouting, saying, I mean, welcome with a banner, welcome to the plane. I'm joking. Of course, the writer meant airport, not airplane. It was fascinating seeing them after six months. I bet it was. I bet it was. Today, good. That makes sense because you spent one day at least greeting your friends and family members, mostly family. And uh, maybe you had some souvenirs and uh, they cooked some meals for you. You, 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 you know, you, the routine, you chatted, you talked. You had a good meal, you had a good discussion after six months, physically seeing each other, people comment on each other, you look taller, thinner, fatter, whatever, you know, that sort of conversation. Anyway, today, when I opened my luggage, I understood my small handbag was left in my bedroom. Okay, so the, so the small bag here is a small handbag, spelled correctly. Bravo, was left in my bedroom. Good. You may remember on the first week, in the, in the first week, uh, or you remember, oh, you may remember the first week I bought this back from Rootley or Rodley Mall. It's a name, I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm, go I'm gonna go with Rodley. Because rudely doesn't sound, it sounds rude. <laughs> Rodley Mall, as it was suitable for sightseeing purposes. Your small handbag was suitable for sightseeing purposes. I guess that was quite, or that is quite a handbag. All right, this is, this is a very good opening. I like it. It touches on the reality. Uh, maybe the, the flight was so long that you said, I finally arrived. Or maybe the wait was too long, you know, six months. And then you had a day chatting, catching up with your family members. And then you open up the baggage and you realize that, oh my God, there's one tiny yet important item missing. The bag itself does not matter to me. Hmm. I, I love the logic here. But actually, some of the things inside it are, not or, are of sentimental value. These include my red diary. I, I don't get why we have one sentence paragraphs. There's no need. It's meaningless. These include my red diary book. Oh, your journal. Oh, you. Oh, that's that's valuable and very personal. And a silver necklace. Uh, this is not the correct spelling of necklace. Silver necklace, which is my boyfriend's first present. Oh, yeah, that's so so valuable. Even though the situation is not realistic i mean this is not a real scenario it still penetrates hearts 
None of the other things are important. Oh, there are other things, but none of them are important. Therefore, I would like to ask your assistance in posting such. I would like to ask your assistant. I would like to ask your assistance in posting such things via express delivery. I would like is polite, but I don't know if you are asking the assistant to send to post. Is that a human being? Or you are asking the assistants again noun, but it's the act. So I don't know if you meant there is an individual who is the family's assistant. Her name is Sarah to send the package for you via express delivery, or you need that family's assistance in sending these items back to you. This is a tricky error. Therefore, I would like to ask your assistance in posting such things. Okay. Let's continue. If you do not mind, I would be extremely grateful to let me know. I would be extremely grateful if you could let me know about the postage process. Yeah, this is not enough. If you could let me know about the postage process, then I will send you the full cost of. Then I will send you the full cost. I, I guess you mean I will cover the full cost. I will send you like you cannot send money via post. You need to transfer money. So you can say I will transfer or I will send the money to your account, something like that. I will wire the money to your bank account. I will have the money delivered to your account. I need something like this instead of saying, I will send you the full cost. I, again, the co or cost is not a good word here, or maybe send is not a good word here because you don't want me to understand to, to get this message that you're going to send the cost to them. You actually want to cover the cost. It's you're going to say that to the, to the English speaking family that don't worry, I'll cover the cost. You don't have to pay a dime. It's all on me. You want to say that, but I want, I, I, I wanted to see a clearer message here than just you say, then, then just saying, yeah, I will send you the cost. <laughs> just better vocabulary choice again. I wish I could thank you enough for such a favor. That's a good ending sentence. I look forward to receiving your reply to my request. Best regards, 182 words. Towards the end, uh, the letter remained polite, appreciative, I still did not get why we have these one line structures. In some letters, the opening statement and the closing statement can appear like this. But I, I, I personally prefer that we keep the, the, the traditional standard format of a proper letter and we do not do these one single sentence paragraphs. That's, that's it, that's just my argument against uh, these, one, uh, these single isolated sentences in the letter. I'm not generally a fan. Uh, I also like this best regards, it's safe. It is safe, it's polite, it's good for this context, it's good for this polite letter. It's all good here. Towards the end, 182 words. Let's look at the band descriptors. All right, this is where the action takes place. All right, so task achievement. Yes, I mean, I, I really liked it. Apart, the, I love the details. You know, the red diary book. You see, it's, it's even red, like the cover is red. It's a diary book. Or the other item, 
uh, that was of great value for her was a necklace and it and the and the and the material was silver you see i i love the attention to detail here the last bullet point needed this small touch a better touch just to know how the package will be sent uh, the assistant is going to do that or you need the family's assistance and you need to also cover the costs you needed to say that clearly not not like yeah i will send you the bill you you pay the bill or you pay the cost i know that wasn't the intention but the intention should have been said clearer coherence and cohesion the sequence of events was was there it was everything according to the bullet points. We had a we had a good range of cohesive devices. Nothing nothing problematic there. We just had some issues with paragraphing, and that's why we didn't get an eight. That, because of this, paragraphing is not important. Up until seven, after seven for high score, you need to also be careful about the type of paragraphs and the structure of your paragraphs for task one. Up to seven, it's quite okay to write the way uh, we have seen here. Lexical resource, everything looks good. Everything except we had three bad word choices and they kept confusing me. Airplane, has a different message that I explained with airport. And I know the writer wanted to say airport, but I, am, I, I cannot help. I can guess. I'm not the writer, I just read. The other one, the or are, which was a verb. If we miss verbs, if we somehow screw up the verb, oh, it's gonna be very damaging. Subject and verbs are the two most important elements in an English sentence. And if we screw up one of them, that's already bad. And finally, towards the end, to cover the cost, we didn't know what that was. Or, oh, assistant and assistance. Oh, that was problematic too. So four instances. But one of them was enough to confuse me. One of them for five is enough and we had four. Grammatical range and accuracy was quite okay. The range was fine, and we had some we had some structures, some uh, second conditionals, but elements were missing. But they did not confuse the reader. I mean that that that's it. That's basically the sentence. Yes, that's an error, but we we didn't we had only maybe one or two very rare. Grammatical errors, maybe one punctuation, we needed a comma or two. So all in all, yeah, 6.5 is a bit on the border. I mean, this, uh, this letter cannot get to seven this easily. I know your letters and emails, these days we send emails, will not confuse your readers because you're going to implement the things you learned from this letter and all the other videos that you can watch here and the blog posts that we post on the website, on the, on the IELTS Juice website. And, I'll, on, and you read all of them, you know what to do on your next letter, emails, or maybe essays. I hope you will have a lovely day ahead.